Hey there, freaking nerds. I just wanted to share something I discovered real quick. I learned that you can emulate hardware ray tracing on any AMD GPU on Linux. So yes, it does require running Linux. But you can see here an RDNA 1 GPU running Indiana Jones in the Great Circle, which is a game that requires hardware ray tracing specifically. It can't be run in a software ray tracing mode. There's no fallback. So if you try to launch it on anything that does not support hardware ray tracing, it will not launch and it'll give you an error. And that includes cards that can normally run DXR titles, like my GTX 1080 Ti can normally run first gen ray tracing titles that use like DXR or software ray tracing titles like Crisis Remastered or Unreal Engine 5 games. But Indiana Jones is not one of those games, so it's really cool to see it working. And what's really crazy is that it works on AMD GPUs as old as GCN. So that includes cards like this RX Vega 64, which here is using the hardware ray tracing emulation feature to run Indiana Jones. And the RX Vega obviously is before even the 5700 XT, before even the RDNA 1 graphics cards. And according to one of the developers that implemented this hardware ray tracing emulation feature, is it works on all GCN GPUs. So this should even include graphics cards like the R9-290X, hypothetically, or hell, even the HD-7970 or 7870 that I'm looking at here, because I basically, I have a 7870. I have this graphics card in my closet, and I was thinking I might just see, you know, if I can launch it, see what happens. But yeah, I just, I thought that was crazy. I thought that was insane that it can support even GCN GPUs for ray tracing and let you launch games that require hardware ray tracing. I used to have an R9 290X, and that thing is about as fast as a 1060. At least that's how it performed in games back then. So that was kind of interesting. I mean, it had a 512-bit memory bus. That was crazy. And they released an 8 gigabyte version too. So I would love to see that launch Indiana Jones or just any hardware ray tracing title. That would be really interesting if anyone is able to test either a 290X or a 390X. But yes, this video of the 5700 XT running it at like medium settings at 1080p with no upscaling. I thought that was crazy. I thought that was absolutely crazy. Running it at like 70 FPS in this kind of small scene, but at 70 FPS, that's crazy on a card that doesn't support ray tracing. And then especially this RX Vega, this RX Vega 64 card, which is not even RDNA. Once again, they show themselves launching it with no cuts. Here they are starting it out. And yeah, they're getting a lot fewer frames than they were from the RDNA card. 40 FPS in this scene is a 1% low. And again, we're starting at like medium low settings at 1080p with a 50% res scale. So yeah, this is running at a low res. This one that's on the RX Vega 64. But the fact that the frame times are so stable and it, the frame rate is 55, 52 frames per second, it's, it's north of that. It's hovering in the 50s to 60s. I just thought that was crazy. I thought that was super cool. They say they're using Fedora 41 here. So I use Fedora on my laptop. That might be worth... It's interesting. But yes, yeah, since 2023, it has had a 100% pass rate. So it should just work in every game that requires ray tracing. It shouldn't be a case-by-case -case thing. The developer is saying that any title that supports ray tracing on Linux should also support the emulated ray tracing on any AMD graphics card. And they seem pretty confident in that. And that seems borne out, you know, with these videos of Indiana Jones, which is a very recent game. So I just thought that was interesting. I mean, the 5700 has the same number of cores as the 6700, predictably. It even has a wider memory bus. But yeah, it's slower, generally. It's like 75% uh, the performance of it, of the 6700. Yeah. And to see it emulating the ray tracing without any hardware support and running games that require hardware support, especially on Linux. Very cool. And this video of it running on the Vega GPU too, the Vega 64, in that video it's also running with the quad-core Skylake Xeon from 2015. So I think that's also hamstringing it. And the one on the 5700 XT is using a i5-12400, which is a 6-core. And this is all possible because of the driver architecture on Linux, which is a little complicated, but I finally understand it. But AMD's graphics driver is automatically included in Linux. 
and that's called AMD GPU. That is the kernel driver. And then the kernel driver talks to the Mesa 3D library, which is an open source graphics library that has drivers in the user space for APIs like Vulkan. And that's what RADV is. It's Radeon Vulkan, I assume. And it is the driver that you can use on any Linux distro, on any AMD GPU practically. And it doesn't matter whether or not your GPU supports ray tracing or not. If it does, it'll use the hardware ray tracing. And if it doesn't, then it'll just emulate the ray tracing. And they've optimized the emulation over the years too, it seems like. So it seems relatively efficient. And the developer explained in this article here that they wrote that this is possible because a lot of AMD's ray tracing pipeline already is software-based and that it's a small part of the pipeline that is hardware accelerated on RDNA GPUs. So all they had to do was implement an efficient software algorithm for emulating that small part of the hardware acceleration. And so it seems like that went pretty well for them. So yeah, I thought that this has really interesting implications for my video that I'm gonna make about AMD's compute units and how they accelerate things like ray tracing and AI or machine learning in the compute unit without implementing their own cores. But yeah, I just hadn't heard anyone talk about this. And this has been a thing for like two years now almost, being able to run hardware ray tracing on any AMD GPU, whether it's RDNA 1 or Vega or GCN. Hell, a 7970 could run this, I think. So that's just crazy. And I just have not heard enough people talk about it. I mean, it's been a thing for three years now. I had a feeling something like this might be possible, but I just, I'm amazed I haven't heard about it. So I just had to spread the word. And yes, I think it is partially because it only works on Linux. But hey, if I had an AMD GPU that didn't support ray tracing and I could get decent ray tracing by switching to Linux for a few games or just by experimenting with Linux, I, I think I know I would be doing that. I would definitely be doing that. I'm already going to try it on the <laughs> really, really old workstation graphics card that I have that has twice the memory of the gaming one. The gaming version, it's I, I basically have a 7870 with double the memory. So yeah, I was thinking I might see if I can just launch any hardware ray tracing title, but I found a few videos of people running it and comparing the ray tracing on Linux using RADV to ray tracing on Windows. And the performance is, uh, it's about 20 frames worse in Metro Exodus Enhanced Edition compared to Windows, that's, that's crazy. And then here's another one of them doing it in Control. And they're running Control with ray tracing set to high with the Director's Cut mod that I showed off in my video. So yeah, it has really high quality ray tracing. They are running at a lower internal resolution of like 960p. So yeah, I just thought that that was crazy, super cool. And I think most people would feel that way and would be interested in this if they knew about it. So yeah, that's just what I wanted to say about that real quick. It really, it does seem like it works really well, ray tracing on Linux, whether you have an AMD graphics card that supports ray tracing or not seems like it's not really a big problem and that you can use it no matter what. So that's really, really interesting. And this is the power of open source, baby. So yeah, that's all for now. Until my next video, peace.